My name is Patrick, and this is Everyday Tech, everyday tech for everyday people. In this channel, I do reviews, tips and tutorials on tech that I use every day or on things that I, f I think might be useful for everyday people. But in this series of videos, I'm calling this not so everyday tech. I'm gonna talk about things that may not apply to everyday people. So I'm a programmer by trade. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what I've been doing with the Notion API and WordPress. Let's get into it. If you're already familiar with Notion and know what an API is, go ahead and skip to the time code of my demo of what I've been working on. But if you're new to Notion, Notion is an all-in-one application that lets you organize your life. You can simply use it as a note-taking app or a to-do list app, or you can full-on use it as a project management app with its calendar and collaboration features. An API or an application program interface is, allows you to programmatically communicate with an application, and in this case, Notion. If you're not a programmer, this still relates to you. An API really expands the capabilities of an application, in this case, Notion. And in this case, an API in Notion allows you to connect with other applications such as Google Docs, Twitter, and Dropbox, to name a few. What's exciting about having an API is not how you use it directly, but it's all about what the tools that other developers are creating. Automate.io and Zapier have created a lot of cool tools that communicate with Notion. If you're new to Notion, in a future video, I'm gonna talk about ways to get started with Notion. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about a little thing I've been developing with WordPress and the Notion API. WordPress is the most popular content management system on the web. I'm a huge fan of WordPress, and I've actually gone to a number of conferences on WordPress as well. I've been developing a simple plugin on how to display Notion content on a WordPress site. So I'm gonna give you a little demo of a plugin that I've been working on in WordPress to talk with the Notion API. But first, in order for this to work, I'm going to need an API key or a token. And this you can find this at developers.notion.com. And you're gonna have to create an integration here and you just create a new integration, which I already have one here called WordPress Notion, and it'll give you a secret token, or it's like an API key that you're gonna need to input into the WordPress plugin that I've created. So we're in Notion here, and I've already created a page here that can integrate with my plugin, but let me do it from scratch again here. So we're gonna go add a page, we'll call this WordPress Notion, and then we're creating a database here, a simple table database with no added additional columns here. We just need the name and we're gonna call this my first page. And then we're gonna go ahead and open up this as a page and put in some simple text. This is the first page content. And that's it. That's pretty much, we're ready to integrate this with my WordPress plugin. But before we do that, we need to make sure this works with the developer integration that we showed in the previous screen. So we go to share, go ahead and add a WordPress Notion integration. So that's the one I created, the one I am gonna grab the key from as well and put it into my WordPress plugin here. So I've selected the WordPress Notion integration click on invite. And so now my API can talk to this database. So let's go into WordPress and show you how we can pull this content in. So we're here in the WordPress admin and I've already installed the plugin that I've been developing for Notion. And so it's created this new menu item here called Notion content. So we're gonna go ahead and go into setup first. And in the setup, we're gonna need two pieces of information, the Notion API key or the integration key that we created in the developer site. And then we need the URL of the Notion content database page. So we'll jump back into Notion and we need the URL of the database page. So this entire thing, we don't need the URL of this individual entry, but we need the URL of the entire database page. And the way we get that of course is in the share button here, or if you're using the web version, you can just grab the URL from there. 
or we're going to go ahead and copy the link here, jump back into WordPress and paste that Notion content database URL there and go ahead and click save changes. Now that we have that set up, we're going to go back to page content here and we're going to click on the list content. Now this is going to pull in all our entries from that Notion database that we created. And now we have our first page here. Now, before we can put this into a page, we need to hit refresh content. And I'll explain why we need this later when uh, we start to update our Notion content. But now we have our short code here. And if, you don't, if you're not familiar with short codes, short codes is a way to insert content into a WordPress page. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this short code here. So now that we have that short code, let's go ahead and put it into a page. So let's go ahead and add a new page called my first page here. And we're gonna add a short code here. So you can insert a short code and we're gonna go ahead and add that short code. Click on publish. Now, if we view this page, the Notion content now shows up. So let's go back into Notion and add additional content to our page here. So I'm gonna add an additional line. And Notion automatically saves that page. But if we go back to our WordPress site and I hit refresh, it doesn't show up right away. Now I have to manually say refresh content here. And what that does, it pulls uh, data via the API from Notion into WordPress. Now I hit refresh and now it shows up. Now the reason why I set it up this way is I didn't wanna do an API call for every user that visits my site. Now if you have a very popular site and you have a lot of simultaneous users, there is a chance that you might hit the Notion API rate limit, meaning the rate limit of the number of times you can give, it a, give the API a call. Now the rate limits are very generous actually it's like three calls a second, but still I didn't wanna take that chance of hitting that limit. Now in future iterations of this plugin, I'm gonna have it where it automatically pulls the data from the Notion API. So that way you don't have to keep on refreshing the content. I'll probably have a call maybe every 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how uh, the user configures it. Back in Notion, I'm gonna create additional pages here. My second page. which doesn't have any content yet. And then I'm also gonna take this page that I created before and go ahead and put that into our new one that we just created. Now this page that I created here has the different elements in Notion and we're gonna see how they translate over. Now I'm only supporting a few things right now and I'm gonna to get to the rest of the elements that are supported by Notion. Let's go back to the WordPress admin to our plugin and let's go ahead and refresh the list. And this should show the, the two additional pages that we created. Now I know there's content in this page here, so I'm gonna hit refresh content. That will do an API call, get the content and put it into our WordPress database here, or WordPress content here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that short code. And we're gonna create an additional page. Also, we'll call it getting started as well. Then we're gonna go ahead and add our short code here. Hit publish. And let's view this page. And here we have the different elements that we've created in our Notion entry here. Now this actually, this getting started page shows you the different elements that my plugin now supports. It's actually regular content here. Uh, header one, two, and three. Bullet points, uh, numbered lists. Now this is unordered list in HTML and this is ordered an ordered list in HTML. Uh, there are some things that my plugin doesn't support yet, a to-do list, but that there are things that the API doesn't support yet, such as dividers, images. So I'm gonna go through the Notion API and see what is supported and make sure I can support every different element in my plugin. Then as things become more compatible with the Notion API, I'll continually add those to my plugin here. So this is a little thing I've been working on as far as the Notion API and WordPress is concerned. Now one use case for this is maybe you have a snippet of content that you wanna put on a section on your WordPress site. 
uh, maybe you want to have someone else manage that, but you don't want to give them like full WordPress access into your site. You just want to have them manage that little piece of content. Well, you can do a collaboration of that entry in the database to someone else and have them responsible for that content. So when they update that piece of content, it'll update in your WordPress site, whether it be uh, just a section in your WordPress site or a full on page. Now, some things that I will be improving on as far as this plugin is concerned is uh, automatic downloading of the content so you don't have to keep on hitting the refresh content. Now, Zapier has some great integrations with Notion and WordPress. For example, you can create a new entry into a database and have it create a whole new page in WordPress. So I, I wanted to do something more simple here. And I have some other thoughts of and other integrations that I'll do in the future as far as Notion and WordPress. I hope you enjoy this first entry of Not So Everyday Tech. Now in the future, I will do, be doing more Notion videos, but more in a general sense. So it'll probably fall back into the Everyday Tech series. But I want to do more advanced, well, considered advanced videos like this. But just because it's considered more advanced uh, doesn't mean that you can't learn something from it. So I hope you would still join me in these videos. If you're a programmer, I will eventually be making this code available once I get it to a certain level that I'm happy with. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and consider subscribing. Until the next one, see ya.